Hello everyone and welcome to this ThingLink Spotlight video. We wanted to bring to you some of our favourite ThingLinks that we've seen emerging throughout the global ThingLink education community. Not only are they our favourites, but we've also heard that they are inspiring other people too. With the recent coronavirus, we've heard that parents and carers are finding home learning quite overwhelming and teachers have been looking for different ways in which to present choices. And Lorraine Salome from Austin Independent School District, which is in Austin in Texas, has put together a thing link that is a choice board offering her students choices of what they can do during the week and also how to keep in touch. Enough from me. I'd like to hand over now to Lorraine, who's going to explain all about the background to it and the impact that it's having with her learners. Over to you, Lorraine. Thank you, Louise. Um, the hardest part for me is going to be keeping this short because I could talk about the joys of ThingLink all day long. And um, I will try to be concise here and tell you just my favorite features of our interactive platform. Um, Luis, you mentioned the families being overwhelmed, and I believe that that emotional um, overwhelm and just scheduled disruption um, and pressure of everything that was happening with the quarantine really contributed to um, this thing link being such a wonderful solution. So basically what we were able to do is we created a background um, template image in Canva and every week as we unrolled new content, we simply added that next thing link um, into the same home page of our school's LMS, which is Canvas. It was important, number one, for the kids to be able to access the resources we were providing through our LMS for that privacy and protection. Um, but as you may or may not know, it is really time consuming to build an entire structure for an online learning course in any LMS. So we just did not have the time um, or the energy to make um, a system that would be interactive through the capability of our LMS by itself. So embedding this thing link image in allowed us to offer resources week after week that followed the same template. And we kind of had a section, two sections that were kind of for more emotional connecting activities. And then we had a printable section, um, which we were able to color code those icons um, to signify the difficulty level. But in addition to the symbology of all of these icons, which the kids became trained very quickly, um, and the families too, how to use this interactive image, we were also able to go ahead and um, on our hotspots, add extra images to give kids directions um, about how to accomplish the activity. Or for example, we always made um, the exclamation point we use that symbol to let the families know this is the place where we want you to start. And in that hotspot, we were able to create screencasts to show the families Welcome where to, to go. Week three, guys. Can you believe it's been three weeks already? And so um, I believe that those those key features, number one, being able to embed it into our LMS was huge. Number two, being able to specify the different kind of activities that we were able to offer using the little symbology of the tiny little hotspot icons was wonderful. Um, just such a nice way to let parents and families know what resources are kind of hiding behind that hotspot. And then we were able to do some fun little things as well. Like for example, in week three, we hid a secret message hiding behind one of the hotspots. So if kids found the secret message, they were to email me and the first kids to do it were, got a little prize. And it was just a really nice way um, to house everything in one place, but also make it personal and make it interactive. So at the beginning of the week, we would start out with a leaderboard. This would link out to an Adobe Spark that would let kids know who was ahead, kind of giving those shout outs since we're not able to grade right now. That feedback and that encouragement was so important. And then we housed, um, we hosted a weekly, we host a weekly live lesson in Zoom, but we also wanted to reduce the pressure on parents to actually be 
having to schedule around our live lesson schedule. And so we hosted those in Zoom through Nearpod. And then after we unleashed that through our live lesson, we were able to link to that self-paced Nearpod for the lesson of the week through our thing link. And so um, just as an example, this one image that you're looking at, we linked to Google Forms for a scavenger hunt activity. We linked to Nearpod, Canva, BrainPop, DreamPop, DreamBox, Flipgrid, a variety of printables, um, a problem of the day through our LMS, uh, which is Canva, and um, online gaming platforms like Kahoot and Quizzes and GimKit. And all of that that I just mentioned is hiding behind this image, which uses a symbol system to alert parents um, what is behind there in families, and then also gives them instructions that are a little more personal and just a little more interactive. So as the weeks have gone on, we have really been able to see kids um, using the features that they they need and that are appropriate for them. But as well as that, when they are interacting with our image, they are also able to get video footage of their teachers and listen to our voices and all of those connection pieces, which I feel like are just so important right now. Um, the usage statistics from the ThingLink site was so handy for us as we evolved through this process. We're able to make each image a little bit more catered to what we see as being used the most. And in addition to that, we are housing all of our ThingLinks on one homepage in our LMS. And what that means for families is if they're behind, if they want to get ahead, if they missed a week, if they like a certain type of resource and want to go back to do it, they're not hunting through emails. They are not hunting all around a huge module um, in our LMS. They are just simply coming to this landing page and then taking away to a bajillion different resources. So I'm super happy with this thing link. I love it. It has been the best thing that could happen to us amidst this terrible time. So Louise, I'm going to hand it back over to you. And that way you would be able to teach um, people how to go about making and using the thing link for their own classroom purposes. Thanks so much. Oh, Thank you, Laurie. That was just fantastic to hear all about how you've been using ThingLink to create your curriculum structure for that week. And it's something that is bright, attractive, engaging and has lots of hidden treasures inside. So some really nice concepts that you mentioned there. The first is that you've got this choice or differentiation with your custom icons that you've got there going from the red and the blue. But also this represents that kind of how to go to buffet, which is universal design of learning, which is just fantastic, as well as the hello comments. And I really like the fact that you've got different types of media embedded there. The greetings from Mrs. Williams, which is an image of her talk. King. And then you've also got the audio embedded as well at the same time, which is just super. So do have a play with this um, thing link that Laurie's created so you can see the kinds of tags that have been added. But one thing that Laurie did mention there was the ability to create your base image or media. And Laurie has used Canva. Canva is a, a tool for desktop publishing, creating posters or graphics. And you can get an education account and uh, create your own media and save images there. And we'll have a look at that. But don't forget, there are other ways in which you can create base images. And I love this thing link from Amanda Picard in Scotland. And she's used a, a Word document that's been saved as a JPEG and then just uploaded. And there's lots of nice images. And, and that's a tool that Amanda is really comfortable using. But then you could also use something like a Google slide or a Microsoft slide. There are lots of templates out there and simply download that as a base image to your thing link. So I'm just going to show you with Canva that I've created this poster. I've put some of my own images in. This is my classroom choice board for the week. And then I can click download and I can download this as a JPEG. And this is the format that I want to use for my base image that I can upload 
into the thing link. So over on thing link, I can simply click my create button and this enables me to upload an image, the video, a 360 image or a 360 video. And of course, I'm going to upload an image. So it will take me to the destination on my device and um, I'll then be able to upload the image. And after a few short seconds, my thing link will be there for me to create. Now, the other concept that um, Laurie mentioned in her presentation there was how to use custom icons quite cleverly and explain to students what those mean. So here I'm going to add a tag and I'm just going to add a plain text tag in for this example. And I'm going to add in my label, which I'll just put choices. Now, here you can see I have the ability to change the icon. Now, ThingLink provides you with hundreds of different icons, and these are also available in different colorways. Um, and what you're also able to do here is you're able to upload your own icons too. And this will enable you to upload a graphic that you've created. And the easiest way to do this that I've personally found is to use uh, Google Drawings um, free with G Suite and also consumer accounts. So you could create a, a drawing here and we've got a little guitar icon with a blue band around it. Very simple to use. Once you've created your drawing, and we've created a separate video for this, but just to give you a quick demonstration, I can click File, Download as, as a Scalable Vector Graphic, which is SVG. These are the only formats that will work for your custom icons. Back in ThingLink, I simply choose to upload my icon, and I can select the SVG graphic, which I've just created. There we go. And here is my new graphic and I can click change icon and that icon will be there ready for me to use. There we go. So after I've um, created my thing link and I've got my icons here, I can click publish. And as Laurie said, she found that um, embeddedness in the LMS system or learning management system for her was the right way to use this with her students. But you can publish this anywhere you like. You might just want to check your visibility settings. So over on your settings cog, you have the ability to change this for your own organization or put this as public. Once you've done that, you can click your publish and this gives you the embed code to embed into a website or your LMS, or you can simply share the link. Um, we also have the ability to share with Teams and with Google Classroom, and this is where you would do that. So there we have it. Back over to Laurie's fantastic thing link that she's created. Um, and as always, do get in touch with us if you'd like to share an example. And we will keep sharing with you. But do join our community, which is on Twitter at thinglink underscore edu or over on Facebook. And we have a group which is ThingLink Education. And we hope that's been helpful. And a big thank you to Laurie for sharing this fantastic example of a choice board. And um, we'll keep sharing with them with you as we find them. So look forward to hearing from you. And we hope you've enjoyed that. So thank you very much. And thank you to Laurie.